One Git skill that took me a long time to fully understand was local and remote repositories, and specifically how they work together. You know, operations like cloning, fetching, pushing, and pulling, that's kind of stuff I'm talking about. And I'm not much for clickbait, so I'll just tell you. The key to understanding these things is the concept of remote tracking branches. For example, you've probably seen the term origin main before, and that's an example of a remote tracking branch. But it's not so much the term itself, but rather the surprisingly simple way that it works behind the scenes. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. By understanding remote tracking branches, techniques like pushing, pulling, and fetching will make a lot more sense. But let's just start back at the beginning. Because in theory, collaborating with Git is actually pretty simple. One repository is stored on a central server, then multiple collaborators clone and sync changes with that repository. So now that I have a copy, the secret sauce is how my local commit history is going to stay in sync between these two repositories. So let's reveal that commit tree and take a look behind the scenes. In my previous video about branching, we learned that branches are just pointers to commits. So even though I'm representing the commit trees here with solid lines, just know that in reality, they're really just a bunch of pointers behind the scenes, more like this. If you need a refresher on any of that, check out my previous video. It's linked below or in the pop-up that just appeared. These two commit trees are pretty standard. However, because, oops, because our local repository was cloned from a remote repository, Git did something pretty clever. It added another branch pointer in my local repository called origin main. And this is not quite your typical pointer. It's what's called a remote reference. And its job is to keep track of the state of that particular branch on the remote server. Hence, my main branch is now a remote tracking branch. By default, remote repositories are labeled origin. So origin slash main refers to the branch named main in the origin repository. Think of remote references like bookmarks that are only updated when these two repositories are synced. So let's say I make a commit in my local repository. My local main branch would advance like normal, but that bookmark stays in place since that remote repository doesn't yet have those changes. So if I go ahead and push my changes, now that reference bookmark is going to advance since the local and remote branches were successfully merged. This same type of behavior would happen if another collaborator pushed changes to the remote repository. When I go ahead and fetch those changes, the remote reference pointer would advance, but my local branch would remain static. Therefore, origin main is going to be ahead of my local main. And it's not until I go ahead and manually merge that these branches get synced up again. If you've ever tried to fetch changes from a remote repository and Git tells you that your local branch is either ahead or behind origin, that remote reference pointer is how it knows. But let's pop open our terminal and take a look at how all of this works in practice. If what we just talked about is still a little bit hazy, I'm sure this is going to clear it up. I'm going to start by cloning my remote repository. And during this cloning process, Git will create a remote reference pointer for my default main branch. But don't take my word for it, let's investigate and see for ourselves. I'll first run git remote v. This will reveal the remote counterpart of my current repository. As you can see, I have a location here that I just cloned from, and Git has labeled it with the default label origin. If your repository is local only and it's not linked with any remotes, the output of this command would simply be blank. Next, I'll go ahead and run the command git branch vv, and this is going to show me which branches are remote tracking within my repository. Here we can see that my local main branch is tracking the main branch from the origin repository. Lastly, I can run my trusty git status command, which will conveniently give me some extra info if the branch that I'm on is a remote tracking branch. So as of now, my local main is up to date with origin main. And this means neither me nor any other collaborators have modified anything since the last time I checked. All right, now that everything is set up, I can start working. As an example, let me just go ahead and create a new file and commit that to my local main branch. Now you can see in the visualization that my main branch pointer has advanced. So if I go ahead and run git status now, git is going to tell me that my local main now contains one additional commit that remote doesn't yet have. Git log can also give us some further information about this stuff. 
So as you can see, here's where the origin main pointer is, and here's where my local main branch is. And as you can see, it's a head by one commit. To sync these changes up, I need to upload them to the remote repository. But before I can do that, it's best practice to just double check if any collaborators have pushed changes while I was working. To do this, I'll just run the command git fetch origin. This command will reach out to the origin repository and pull down any new commits that I might not have yet. And after that's done, I'm good to go. To upload my changes, I'll just run git push origin main. This tells Git I want to upload any changes from my local main branch to the origin repository's main branch. And it's really as simple as that. Since the remote repository now has my changes, that origin main pointer will automatically advance to reflect this. And I can double check that once again by running git status or git log, where I can see both my main and origin main pointers once again refer to the same commit. And that's really all there is to it. However, when you're collaborating with others, things can get a bit more complicated. And in fact, let's go grab some coffee and see if anybody else pushes changes to that remote repository while I'm gone. <sighs> All right, now that I'm back, let's go ahead and check for those changes. I'll run that same git fetch origin command, and yep, I can already see that one of my colleagues has pushed some changes to remote main. And as a result, that fetch command has actually automatically downloaded them. But let's run git status as a starting point. Here I can see that my local main branch is now a commit behind my remote branch. And just like any normal branch, I can also run git log origin main. And that's going to give me a list of commits that I'm missing. As you can see here, this is the commit my coworker added, and here is where my local main is currently located. One commit behind, just like in the visualization. So what's my next move? Well, I have to incorporate those remote changes into my local branch. And to do that, I'll simply merge my local main with origin main. This is really similar to how you'd normally merge any branch. And in fact, that's kind of on purpose. Thinking about origin main as simply another branch is actually what's happening here. So by running git merge origin main, I'm telling git to merge those new remote changes into my local main branch. And voila, I'm all synced up again. Git status is going to confirm that, and so does git log. I know that that was a brain dump with a lot of information, but let's quickly review. Clone duplicates repositories and sets up remote reference pointers for the main branch. If a branch is tracking a remote counterpart, would say that that branch is a remote tracking branch. The fetch command imports changes from remote repositories and updates any remote references. And then lastly, the push command uploads local changes to remote repositories. Plus, we can always use our git status, git log, or git branch vv commands to take a look at the state of our local and remote branches. At this point in the video, especially if you've had git experience in the past, you might have been wondering why I've skipped some stuff. And you'd be right to wonder that. For example, what would happen if I tried to commit local changes at the same time as another collaborator pushed their changes? Well, when I sync using fetch, I'd get a scary message that says my main and origin main branches have diverged. Or what about how I should set up a remote tracking branch if Git didn't do it for me automatically? Like what if I was working on a feature branch and then wanted to share that branch with other collaborators? Well, I'd be happy to cover those and other scenarios in future videos, but leave a comment and let me know what you want to learn. And in the meantime, if you've made it this far, you may be interested in the monthly newsletter I write or the side project that I'm working on called learngit.io. I'll leave links to both of those in the description, as well as my email address if you wanted to connect with me. Anyways, I think that's all I got. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.